We had to come to town today to run some errands and pick up something that Mike had delivered to a friend's house. And for once in my life, it's not something for him, it's something for me. And guess what? It is not small. All right. So maybe if we lift it up, it's like up on top. Holy moly! He man over there doing it single-handedly. He's yawning it. I'm just here. I'm supervising. Good job, supervisor. This is my buddy John. We used to work for the same company. Shared the same station a few times, and. Uh, and has been super cool letting Mike have all kinds of stuff shipped to his house. <laughs> yeah, like illegal things and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I guess we're going to find out what the big life. surprise is uh, any minute now. My, what an interesting development is happening at our car. <laughs> at the um, water bladder that is supposed to be for bringing water to our bus. This opened a little bit and because I had it face, I had this down thinking it'd be easier to fill it. And because it was sloshing around, it caused this to open a little bit. And uh, yeah, and you can see the results of yeah, that. Yeah, we got a little bit of a swimming pool. We here. have a lake in our car and everything is wet, not only in the back, but the whole floorboard back here is soaking wet too. Like everything is wet. This is a disaster. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's still pouring out even the front of the car. Oh my gosh. It's a good thing we live in Arizona so it will dry before it molds and mildews. Right? Oh, I can't believe that happened. I can't recycle. It was like this worst case scenario that just totally unfolded. Totally. All right, well, I flipped it over so the valve won't come and open it again. I thought the thing popped or something. I know, right? So I was just like, we come out to the car and we're like, because you could just see water draining out and the guy next to us in the car like, hey, you got a jacuzzi in there or something? <laughs> That's the first time we've really seen a big group of elk since we've been out here near Greer, but also the first time we've been able to capture a big buck with a huge rack on camera. So that was really cool. Yeah, it was epic. Like we've been talking about like, you know, how many elk we've seen and stuff. And we've seen some little like two pointers and stuff, but we hadn't seen a magnificent bull elk yet. And then there it was, man. I think we're gonna need the wet dry. I think we have a floating spare. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is bobbing in there. You can see where a lot of the water went. I'll bring a cup to start bailing out there as much go. as we can for starters. Oh my gosh. When we got home last night, the sun was already down and it was dark. So we just decided to wait until this morning to take care of the water mess. So we could pull everything out of the car and get it out in the sun to dry and then let the carpets dry out on the inside. I've seen a lot of people in vans and RVs and buses have those really small handheld vacuums like a dust buster kind of thing and they always say they're great but I have always been a huge proponent of the wet dry vac in the small one gallon size and today is one of the days where that is really going to pay off. Here. 
so now with all the obstacles and interruptions out of the way, we can finally get back to the exciting task, getting the big box down. I had to redeem myself from yesterday. After John got it up there by right? himself. I was like looking all stupid. I'm all. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, big shout out to Turbo Ant. They approached us about uh, testing their bike. First off, they said they were going to send us the Turbo F S1. Here's the picture. Okay. Then she said, did you receive your Turbo R1? Here's the picture. And then we get the box and it says it's an S1. Which so, is the one I wanted in the first place. They're both very cool. And we wouldn't complain with either one, honestly, because that means Carrie and I can go bike riding this together. This is the one I wanted. I already saw the fender. Really? Yep. Nice. Are you getting it? This is a folding bicycle. This is the one perfect for bus life at my dad. Yeah, see? You go like this. Boom, folded. There we go. Multiple gears, awesome. Oh, does it have an actual factual kickstand? Sure does. Boom. What a really nice bicycle. This is extraordinary. Look on the other side because it's more important. Does it have to go into that slot? There. Now, I used to think, why would anybody want an electric bike? Isn't the whole point to be pedaling and getting your exercise while you're out there on it? But I have to tell you, circumstances have changed for me. Because I have complex PTSD, I get weird, weird symptoms from ordinary things like just feeling cold air on my skin or the wind on my skin things like that can send me into a downward spiral that puts me back in the bus taking medication possibly throwing up going to bed the whole nine yards these are symptoms i try to avoid and one of the things that causes that downward spiral is doing anything that gets my heart rate up because i guess because having my heart rate up kind of mimics the um, sensation of panic. So it just triggers all those um, other symptoms. So there's so many things that I have not been able to do for the past six years now since my onset of symptoms. And riding a bike is one of them. I don't know if you guys have noticed, we've been carrying two bikes on the back of our bus for almost a year now. And I have not ridden that thing once at all because I know what's going to happen if I do. So I just don't. And, and when Turbo Ant approached us, I was like, oh my God, we could go bike riding. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say is that unfortunately that means that Mike hasn't been going out riding his bike either because he, he feels bad. He doesn't want to leave me at home alone while he's going out on a bike ride. So our bikes have been severely underused. And this is finally something that I can do. And as I understand it, it gives you the versatility of pedaling when you want to or not pedaling when you don't want to. So how perfect is that going to be for me to be able to go on a bike ride? And yeah, maybe get a little bit of exercise, but not so much that it puts me into that panic heart rate level. So this couldn't be a better gift to me. I'm so, I'm just stoked that they sent this thing to us. I can't believe it. This is a cool one too. I know. Yeah, this is a Metro style bicycle. So I'm going to get this thing into a gear. That's cool. Ooh. Oh, that's an automatic function. This is like, now this is, this is like, like motorcycle mode now. Moto mode.
There he goes on my bike, never to be seen again. He's way down there. This thing was holding down 20 miles an hour going uphill. Oh my gosh, with you on it. This thing's a beast. And no, you cannot ride my bike. I'm gonna ride your bike all the time. <laughs> They talk to me first. I'm not. I had the keys from you. Oh, dang it. Dang it. I wish it had keys. <laughs> it does have keys. It does have keys? Yes. Oh, good. I am going to hide the keys from you. Here's the keys. Yay! I'm not exactly sure where the keys operate, but it has keys. So, um, good for me. Holy cow. This thing is amazing. I am over the moon. This is perfect for carry. Show me how to ride it. Okay. Okay. I need full body armor, don't I? I'm gonna wreck, aren't I? I gotta put a helmet on you at least. I, I'm confident you can ride this bike. My confidence stops with you remembering to take your hand off the gas. Okay. <laughs> so, you have no faith in me. That's is what you're saying. I don't want you to get hurt. Tell him, guys. I'm not gonna get hurt. It's my fat boy. Hey, where are you going? Road. I think he basically brought me to like the kindergarten learning grounds That's all right. the way out here to the road. She hasn't ridden a bike very much since I've known her. Well, fortunately, I hear it's just like riding a bike. Don't ruin that saying right here, right now. Okay, you got to teach me the lesson first. Everything's on. So get on the bike and then engage that. And then can you start pedaling and then do that? Sure, you just... can. Okay. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> just keep, just tap it on. You just turn it until you feel it. I think I should just start pedaling first. Okay, whatever you want. It just feels like more like... I got it in a nice low gear for you to pedal. I'm scared to death. However, if we can get her comfortable riding this, then we can ride together. And that's what I'm going for. I really want us to be able to ride together a lot. Hopefully we can go to places that aren't so extreme and uh, do some fun bike rides together. What do you think of your fancy bike? Judging by that smile, I'm going to say you like it. It goes fast enough to be cold. <laughs> How could you wear cold into this? <laughs> Only you. I know. I'm going to have to have like pants and long sleeves on when I ride my bike at 9,000 feet in the air elevation. Right. Well, I think we can pretty safely be assured that I'm not going to be trying any evil Knievel stunts right out the door on my first day. Though you do have front shocks. Okay, so maybe tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should change my name to Carrie Knievel. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds great. You know, one indication of how long it's been since I've ridden a bike is that I keep wanting to pedal backwards to brake. Oh God. <laughs> like a kid's bike. <laughs> oh God. You know, this is, this is so perfect because we live in the dirt and you have these big fat dirt tires now. Yeah, because I'm a that, fat boy kind of girl. That's right. And she, that's why she's got me. I got my fat boy and my fat boy. That's right. <laughs> brakes work good. That's good. You'll learn the brakes. I think I'm going to have to switch to drinking fat tire ale. <laughs> She's talking a big game I now. I know. I'm full of wow, it. Wow, this thing's gone to her it's head. It's going to be gin lemonadas for sure. <laughs> Woo! We could charge it with our solar panels. How do you like that? Why we charge it on the sun. That's right. This that is, is a very eco-friendly bicycle. Solar right fat boy. Yup. Mm -hmm. 
That's a turbo ant. <laughs> it's so awesome. Mama Kitty, you wish you could ride in a basket on my bike, huh? Oh, this we thing will have a basket. It will have a basket. so nice and warm and awesome this morning when I was out there riding my bike. I was in my summer clothes, finally this summer, and look at it now. It got windy, it started to rain, it got chilly. Yes, we're not getting enough sun. Yeah, we're having to turn on the generator now. Yep. Or use power. It's actually chilly out there. It is. It's so what is it? Oh, it's 57 outside 75 inside that's what i like to hear and here's the rain ah but it's coming in the door cold rain yikes i'm missing summer i'm telling you i gotta be, get back to the summertime i'm gonna ride my bike back to where it's summer <laughs> pretty cool orange tips on the gray clouds up there i keep seeing these awesome purple flowers on the side of the road and I can't tell what they are when we're driving past. So I finally made Mike pull over. Look at them. Oh, there's a tiny little moth like collecting nectar at one of these flowers right now. Wow. That's so neat. Totally National Schooly graphic. I just don't know what they are. I just know they're beautiful. Wow. You guys were going through this crazy hailstorm in the middle of like a summer day. That is all hailstones on the ground. Holy crap. This is crazy. I am wearing shorts, you guys. This is not the weather I was expecting today. This weather is crazy in the mountains. All right. You guys, something is wrong with our car, but we don't know what yet. Transmission. It's not. We, something just happened. Like our transmission is gone. So, we pulled over and then after we stopped, a huge ton of white smoke came out from under the hood. But Mike thinks it was from its the transmission fluid. fluid. Yeah, the fluid just spraying on the hot engine yeah. and smoking. But which means it's leaking from somewhere or something? There was I, a failure? I don't know, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's a mystery. I don't think at we have point. enough transmission fluid. Let me see if we're leaking behind us. So, mountain adventures continue, not in the way we had hoped. <laughs> I hope that this is something that is just a minor repair and refilling with some transmission fluid and being good to go. I'm crossing my fingers for that. We'll keep you posted. So, there's fluid on the ground. It's red fluid, which is transmission fluid. And... I don't know if we lost like a transmission hose or a cooling hose, transmission fluid cooling hose. I mean, I don't think we're driving from here. No, I wouldn't think so. Thank goodness we've got the e-bike in the back. But yeah. I don't know where you're going to go and what you're going to do with it to get us help. Yeah, we'd have to call our good Sam. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mountain Sam. Adventures, good Sam style. Not very good. 
bad Sam style. Because we're going to have to take the bus to go pick up the car. <laughs> That's true. Thank you for calling Good Sam Roadside Service. If you are calling for a motorhome, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or for a vehicle with equipment in tow, please press 2. How lucky are we that we just happened to have an e-bike in the back of our car on the day we break down. Huge. Right? So Mike is going to ride the e-bike back to the bus and get me some warmer clothes for one thing and then come back and then I can take the e-bike and he could ride his bike, which also happens to be on the back of our car Which today. is like super unusual. Super unusual that that would even happen. And we're still lucky in our unluckiness. <laughs> So yeah, and then we'll both be able to make it back to the bike and um, Good Sam is on their way. Well, not yet, we're still on hold, but they will be on their way to take care so, of the Jeep. We bought this rack. Didn't the guy like have all the, the little parts in another bag for us? Oh, it's up here on the dash right here. Oh, okay, good, let me have that. What we're trying to do right now is we had gone into uh, Sholo specifically to buy one of these this rack right here. So we got this cool bike, he watched us assemble it, and it just happened to be with us because we're gonna be storing it in the car. Super cool. We brought the bikes into town so we could wash them, so I could wash my bike out because it had tons of road grime. So we just happened to have my bicycle with us. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do, since we're gonna have this towed, and it's probably gonna be hours until they get here, Carrie and I need to go back, but Carrie's allergic to the cold and she's standing out here in shorts and- Yeah, make it snappy, I'm dying out here. <laughs> right, <laughs> so basically what I'm doing is I'm assembling the rack here so I can shuttle some of our stuff back, go back, get Carrie some warm clothes, bring those back, she can ride this bike, I can ride my bike back to the bus um, until such time as we hear from the tow truck driver so I can come back out and meet him on the bike. <laughs> All on the trusty Turbo Ant. So the Turbo Ant, what is this one? Saves the, the Swift, day. The Swift S1 is totally saving the day. Like this, I can't even tell you. The hero of the how hour. perfect this works out. I know. I'll be back with warm clothes and other such things. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe this is the Turbo Ant. Swift S1 saving the day. You look like a homeless dude. I am a homeless dude right now. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. <laughs> Miles Fly like the wind, Ona! I'm going to. <laughs> Hi, hon. Hi, my honey. Woo, it's freezing out here. Can't tell the old Chili. <laughs> Can't believe you found my kitty pants. <laughs> I know. Here's your old kitty pants. Beloved kitty pants. Oh, you found my warmy hat. Good call, baby. Oh, glove. There's one glove. There's the other one. Boots, socks. Oh, thanks, my hounds. She's fixed on something instead of gazing around anymore. Yeah. Oh, she sits up taller. She knows it's us for sure.
look at her, she's going crazy rubbing on the basket. Okay, you guys, a little update. So, the turbo ant comes through like 10 out of 10 on my scale right now because we rushed and we packed up stuff out of the bus. We had grocery, or the uh, Jeep. We had groceries. We had some stuff we needed to bring back. We had some valuables that we didn't want to leave in the Jeep. We were about three miles from the bus. And then we, uh, we started going and then it started to rain and then it started to hail and then it rained and then it drizzled and then we got back to the bus and ironically it stopped raining right when we got here but uh i brought carrie some clothes because we know how she feels about the cold <laughs> so when we what, what's the temperature right now um 50 degrees so it's 50 degrees outside and wet and uh Luckily, I had my bike, so I pedaled back. But the turbo ant made it three times. Yeah, so I rode the turbo ant from the Jeep back here, got carried clothes, brought a load with me. Then I took a, our, our crate for our uh, stuff I keep in the back of Jeep, one of those milk crates, and I packed, I brought that back and my big uh, Osprey backpack. And then we loaded all that stuff up into our backpacks and into that thing and brought it back again. And the battery's still full on the turbo amp right now. Like, unbelievable. Climbing hills, it, it carried my big butt up this hill over here, and I helped it, but I was doing 15 miles an hour up a steep hill, like, no problem. Like, that turbo amp kicks ass. Super good. Carrie's super proud of her because she hates the cold and she totally went for it because we didn't have a choice. We survived the great breakdown of 2021. We did. So Woo! we were able to uh, get back here in one piece. There was lightning going off overhead. It was freaking me out. We're like right in the middle of a meadow when the lightning really started kicking off. I'm like, I think we're the biggest targets here. So mm -hmm. thankfully... But I'm cold and wet and I need to change my clothes and have a hot sure. cup of tea from England. I'm having a mixie, maybe a lemonade. I'm just going to say thank you, Kevin K, for right? my excellent tea. That tea's coming through tonight, big time. So, wow, Turbo Ant, you guys were awesome. You guys saved our bus today. You guys didn't even know you were going to do that. You guys, I just came out the bus door to this. I don't know if I can really fit this in the camera, but O M. G. This is the most amazing rainbow and I thought we already had the most ra amazing rainbow at our other place um, outside of Alpine. <laughs> this is ginormous. Oh my gosh, it's the biggest full rainbow I've ever seen in my life. For sure. Wow. I wish I could fit it all in the camera at once. And look what's on the other side of the bus. The sky is the most brilliant orange on this side. Wow. It's so amazing out here. I'm out here in my pajamas right now because I, I couldn't miss out on seeing this beauty outside in real life instead of just out the bus window. Oh my gosh, it's breathtaking. Brilliant orange sunset over here. Beautiful rainbow over here. Okay, goodbye beautiful place at 9,000 feet elevation. You were too cold for me. The coolest thing about today is that I actually get to ride in the bus with Mike, which is super exciting for me. It's so much more fun traveling together this way. And yes, we could still do this if we towed the car, but usually when we're driving a short distance, we don't bother with hooking up the car and then having to wash it when we're through. Not to mention that the tow bar was slightly bent 
which made a massive change in how easy it was to attach the tow bars. So unfortunately, because of that, it's a lot easier to uh, drive than hook up because it takes like absolute precise positioning of the Jeep to get the tow bars hooked up within like an eighth of an inch. It's horrible now. We just don't do it for the short trips like this. I'd run a thousand miles if I could run with you. And from what I have heard, you do the same thing. Guess where we are right now? We're here to pick up our one-eyed baby. Hello. Sorry to take the entire front yard out there. transmission fluid for a while just to make sure that sure. it's not losing fluid. He couldn't find anywhere. Um, but Can't find any, any leaks or anything. No. Right. And then he flushed your block as best he could, but it couldn't, it still couldn't get everything out of it. So mm -hmm. he said, you can clean that reservoir out as you see it building and mm -hmm. there's a couple little things. Little can, floaties that are going to yeah. be in there. And then you still may need to flush that radiator, even though we put a new one in. Mm -hmm. There's still stuff circulating in there. And he's like, Aaron just said that he had to flush his three times before it got all that stuff out of there. Okay. Oh my God. But it should be, it should get you where you're going. Mm -hmm. Just watch all of those things. Um, he test drove it, everything drove really well and everything. But um, just know that, you know, watch your fluid and then a while down the road, you might want to um, have a radiator service on that okay. um, and do it at least one more time just to get it all. Because right. it was like, it looked like peanut butter. That's so weird. It was. Like it a was chemical just, reaction or something. It was, but it runs, it's running really good. Okay. Um, sounds good, a whole bit. Okay. I just want you to be aware of everything that gotcha. I can tell you. So okay. anyway, so it's 1596. Mm -hmm. So you're going up. Just don't go across the reservation at night. There's no fences, okay? So livestock's on the road. Okay. okay. So don't do that at night. That's not. What was the total? 1596. 96. Oh, you got the exact amount out. You sitting here watching me count all that, knowing that you got the exact amount out. <laughs> I'm gonna count it again. I know. <laughs> well, I expected you to. He just stood there and watched me do it. <laughs> anyway, well, well all right. thank you very thank much. You. We really appreciate all your help with all this. Put us a Google review on there. Oh yeah, you're sure you're will. gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> it was okay. it wasn't on you that whole time I was talking. Okay. So. <laughs> thank, thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> You guys just a quick update the Jeep has been running fine ever since we picked it up from the shop and we toured all over northern Arizona so you'll be seeing some videos about that coming up but right now we're way up here in the high desert of Alamosa Colorado at 7,500 feet elevation at the gutted event here I'll show you a quick sneak preview
So we're kind of at the foot of this mountain, but as you can see, and this is the direction we came in from, it's absolutely barren and desolate desert land. And then here are all the visitors and the participants in the gutted event who are staying here just like us. These are our team. Our team is all in a row right here and the next two buses down that way. And over here is the main event tents. So under this arch tent, they have each of the teams, the van, the RV, and the bus, um, the cabinet makers and saws and stuff like that. And these Connex containers on the ends, they have all the tools available for the three teams and the supplies like electrical and plumbing and things like that. This is like the refreshment and rest area. So there's always drinks and snacks and then they serve um, two meals a day in there. And then on this end, they do little, I don't know, group things, little lessons that they teach or yoga classes or interesting things like that. I don't have the schedule of events because I've been too busy editing. But let me just tell you, the dirt here is like walking in moon dust. Your foot gets completely buried in dirt with each step and then the dirt fills up your flip flop and then when you take a step forward and pull your foot out of the dirt, it flings the dirt up your back and forward in front of you and you just become a filthy mess. And that's not the worst part. <laughs> That extra weight of having to pull your foot out of the heavy dirt is causing the straps of my flip-flops to make blisters on my feet. So I can't even really walk around comfortably anymore. So I'm getting out the e-bike because I go back and forth from here to the main tent like 15 times a day. Plus, I have some touring to do. We have some friends here that have built a new rig and I wanna go check that out. And a couple new people that I've met that I wanna check out their rigs too. So I have some uh, driving around to do and I'm gonna need my trusty turbo ant for that. have to go over to the main tent area and get Mike to come over here and make the thumbnail for this video that you guys are gonna hopefully get today. I'm way behind on my editing. But I want to give a huge shout out to Turbo Ant for sending us this spectacular e-bike that I already love. And and you guys give us a like if you liked our e-bike breakdown episode and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out our Patreon, but most of all, make sure to come back next Thursday for our next episode. Bye you guys, we'll see you next week.